Hi, I'm Rich Fink from the Western Latin Art and Studio Tour, and today I have the pleasure of interviewing a fabulous potter, David Norton. David, how are you doing today? Doing well, thank you. Well, that that's just great. So let let's get let's get started. Uh, why don't you start with uh, telling me a bit about your artist journey? Well. Um... Uh, let's see, I started in, uh, 1975. Uh, I was in public relations, had a degree in journalism, uh, and, uh, I w also had uh, a pottery wheel. And, uh, after I did a bunch of public relations and opened up a brand new store for this company I was working for, they canned me and, uh, I started making pottery and, uh, never looked back. Um, that's great. Five and uh, I, I looked at the people who were making a living from it. The nail had gray hair. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I knew this was going to take me a while. Uh, and in 1977, I moved to the. I started off in Ohio, up on Lake Erie when it was really cold, and um, came to Virginia in 1977 and got right into the Torpedo Factory Art Center in 1978, and I've been there ever since. Uh, from being in the torpedo factory, uh, I've had a, a world stage because we're right on the river in Old Town, Alexandria, right across from DC, and you never know who is going to walk in the door. And because of lovely people who've walked in, I, the first start, first bit of my conversation with whoever walks in is, "Where are you from?" And uh, they're from all over the world. And uh, so. Uh, whenever they would buy something from me, I would I would be sure to know where they were from, and I would take note of it. And if it was from something some place that I'd never had any pottery, I would make I had started a world map, and um, and took I was there so, so many years that the map dissolved and blew away, but I kept a list, and uh, and up to now it's it's about 85 countries that my pottery is in, and uh, all all 50 states, and. Uh, Lately, in the last uh, decade or so, I, I've been fishing for new countries. So uh, what I do is I ask somebody where they're from, and if they're from someplace like Kamakazakhstan or something, and I don't have any work there, I I say, okay, you can have this if you promise to take it there and leave it there. So uh, <laughs> that's how I got something in, you know, in Antarctica and uh, all over the world. Yeah, so all seven continents. Wow. That's that's great. That's that's really great, David. I, I, I had a friend who did. Um, she was a videographer for Lynn Blatt Expeditions, and she went to Antarctica a couple times a year. And I said, hey, Nancy, how about taking this mug to Antarctica and leave it there? And she said, OK. And so I forgot all about it. And uh, uh, about six months later, she came over to the house, had this DVD and she pops it in. And there's the her Antarctica trip. and starts off with this lady pe counting penguins and they're there in front of their tent. She goes, come on in. And so they go into the tent and there's their radio that they communicate with and they scan over and there's my mug sitting on a little table in the middle of it. Okay. So it's there. There you go. That's terrific. That's terrific. And, and it's really, uh, I, I've learned that um, it's not about the money that I make or don't make. It's, it's more money that I don't make. But anyway, it's the connections that I've made. Uh, especially in the later years. I've done, done a lot of mentoring. Uh, never know who's going to walk in the door at the torpedo factory. And uh, I always give them both both barrels uh, because art classes are dwindling and, and people's some people's only contact with handmade pottery is the movie Ghost, you know, so I, I go crazy when I hear that. So uh, I, I make it a point to, if it's a young person or a young potter or somebody, I telling my life story and how enthusiastic I am about what I do and about my life and how I put all the pieces together and and uh, and it, I, I've done it so many times that um, there have been young people who have you know their 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 tangent in life was altered because of what I said and what I how I explain how I love my life how I love getting up in the morning how um, I don't have I don't have a smartphone. I don't have cable TV, TV, but I love my life. I love getting up in the morning, and that's far. And I don't commute. I, I walk around in a walnut tree, so it's my pottery is right down the hill there. And now we have our own gallery here. 
So uh, I'm perfectly content to stay here and focus on my work. And uh, when you when you when your work and your life look the same, it's like swimming downstream. Everybody's got to swim, but if you're swimming downstream, you get a hell of a lot further down the way. Down the way. So that's sort of how I look at life things. Well, I, I have to agree with you on that uh, on that point for sure. That um, I, I wish I'd known you were going to say this because Mark Twain had a great quote that was very similar to your philosophy. But oh, really? I just, yeah, I just can't pull it up. I'll, I'll, I'll drop you an email when I, when I <laughs> okay. okay? Yeah, um, yeah. Well, I would like to ask you, um, what inspires you uh, for, for your artwork? Well, um making a living inspires me i mean it's like what do you call this i go i call i used to call that well that was a trip to snowbird in utah <laughs> but uh, uh I, i'm not trying to make some statement uh, i'm trying to provide a, a, a living and put food on the table and be happy in the process and um what inspires me is good good functional pots that serve a purpose and that people just love to use uh, I hear about it over and over again. I, I okay, I, I go to the Torpedo Factory every Saturday. It, it, it's closed right now because of the virus, but every Saturday for the last 42 years, I've gone to the Torpedo Factory and I make 20 months every single Saturday. And it makes me more interesting because I'm not sitting there reading a book. Um, I'm making pots, my hands are dirty, and people come right up to me. So there are a lot of cups, a lot of Norton mugs out in the world. <laughs> Lots, like, like, 30,000 for, I don't know, there's at least 30,000 of them. So anyway, um, I hear about them because people get so attached to them that when they break it or for somebody drops it or whatever, I hear about that day and they're frozen. They, they call me and they go, I can't drink my coffee. And that happens on a regular basis. Uh, so uh, that's, that's great that people are so attached to something that I've made. I mean, it's so meaningful to them and it makes their, their life so much better. It's, it, it's drinking coffee. You know, it's, it's not just fueling up. It's having a uh, uh, something warm in your hand and and a human embrace. And it's all they're all tied together. When my wife and I sit down to eat dinner, um, it's just she and I. But there are probably eight different potters represented in the work that we're eating off of. And they're all better than me. And they all have something to all tell me. And uh, it's it's just um, it's it's the human touch thing that that's so important it's it's and really um it's so i'm not sure how to deal with that now uh with the the, the touch thing is so important that that uh, we're li li we're missing that right now and what's going to replace that so uh you know hopefully my my mugs will still and my, my my plates and the people that think the work that people use in their lives will Suddenly fill that void somehow, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. And we'll see. We'll see. Um, there's one thing I have to say. I don't think in my life I have ever said, "Oh, I I can't drink that coffee." Um, <laughs> well, I think they they sip it out of a paper cup just to make the phone call, but uh, <laughs> they really they, they they get so attached that uh, they they want one right away. So it's it's great. <laughs> yeah, that is great. That's a great feeling, and it, you know. It, no matter what you do in life, and I'm I'm really happy for you that that this is not just a job. This is your life. I, that's oh, yeah. that, that's that's awesome. I um, I know what God put me on earth to do, and and my wife uh, supports that. She she's worked hard all her life, and 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 given me the go ahead to do what I do as hard as I can do it, uh, because she feels the same way that that uh, this is my calling. Well, I certainly hope that you have a very special mug uh, to take with you when you meet God in the end. Oh, thanks. Um, I do have a question, though, because you've, you've had a long career here in, in pottery, obviously. Uh, any ideas on how you your techniques have changed over, over the years? Techniques? Um, or process, whatever you want to. I'm, Whatever. Trying, I'm trying to make things easier on me. Uh, it, it, everything that I've done has has aided me from getting from point A to point B. 
uh, I have a car kiln. The, the whole floor and the door and the shelves all roll out on steel wheels. And I load it and it all pushes in on a drawer. So all those things, if I can identify some point in the process that makes my life easier and helps me get there sooner, uh, I'll, I'll buy it or invent it or, or make it or something, but change the process because it's such a hard, um, it's a hard occupation. You, you, it, you lift a lot of stuff. I've gone through a hundred tons of clay in my life. It's all about saving money in, in the beginning. Um, uh, because, uh, when you're when not when you're not paying for shipping and water, you're just paying for the raw materials. The raw it's dirt we're using, so it's just mixing dirt with water, and there you go. There's your raw ingredients. That's another thing that appealed to me. I'm I'm really cheap, and uh, I I thought that this was a really good way to make a living and not really spend that much. And if I really bombed out, I wouldn't have lost that much. Um, so you know, my 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 studio. I've always lived where I worked, and uh, so. Like right now, the meter is not running. It's, you know, I'm not paying for some rental shop. I'm not paying for some studio that I'm not in. When I stop, the, the meter shuts off and it's not, it's not sucking water out, money out of my checking account. Everything, it's all built to ease of operation and, and uh, low, being low uh, uh, um, overhead and just uh, live, you know, work where I live and, and, and get a lot done. Yeah, yeah. That's true. Well, it makes perfect sense. Great plan. Great plan. Well, what I would like to uh, do now is uh, is bring out the three images and yeah. uh, of your of your artwork so that you know we can talk a little about it, each one of them. Is is that okay? Yeah. Okay. So um, although normally, uh, David, I I start from um, left to right. I think today I'm going to reverse that uh, because I want to leave the best, what I think is the best for last. So well, let's start with the uh, the uh, set of goblets. Is that what you would? Uh, yeah. Is yeah. The term? yeah. Okay. So uh, this particular um, image, this particular functional uh, product. Have you made a, a lot of these over time, or why did you end up saying, "Well, this would be, this would just be, you know, a, a great product for people to use"? Well, as a as, a, as an old as a former altar boy, uh, it, <laughs> there's a certain familiarity of the form, uh, but uh, no, they they feel good uh, in your hand. Uh, they're really tall. They're really dramatic. Uh, if you they come are. out on your porch and you have that in your hand, you say, get out of my yard, people will move out of your yard. Uh, it's, uh, and, and uh, I love the colored gradients, how they, how they come out. Um, these in particular uh, indicate a, a certain spot in my kiln. Um, it's like the yin and the yang part of my kiln. Uh, oh, really? It's a gas kiln. And so gas circulates through there and, in an electric electric kiln, it's just a big fat toaster, and it, it warms the glazes up. They melt to a certain temperature, and there you go. But with a gas kiln, you could you can adjust the atmosphere and thereby create uh, a gas rich atmosphere or a slightly gas rich. You can do it all kinds of ways. So um, sometimes you'll have uh, an area that is gas rich, but it's right next to a place where the a little bit of air is getting in, so it'll change the color. And those first those three of those four pots are right on that cusp of where the air is just sort of glancing on the side of the pot and turn the, the copper red into copper blue. And it's the same glaze. I dipped them into, into the bucket and pulled them out, but how, how the, uh, the gas glanced those pots is why they showed up the way they do and how they're partially uh, one color on one side and another color on the other side because where they that little area in the kiln that's between yin and yang uh, so that's sort of indicates it's, it's a nice photograph but, but it also indicates a, a juicy little spot in the kiln and they're 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 beautiful and they they kind of be, because this type of uh this type of beverage container let's just let's just call it that is is not unique, but it's uh, not something that you see all the time. And this kind of has like almost a, I don't know, like, like 
a mini uh, medieval flavor to it, you know. Like the Holy Grail. All right, okay, let's move down to the uh, down center, and um, I I I love the design of this um uh, entirely I, but of course from from the picture i i can't tell how how large is this uh this is a big boy uh this is this is um i think they're about 12 or 13 inches across hmm. so it's it holds a lot it's it's like something you pull out on thanksgiving it it it's pretty hefty and um there's a whole thing a lot of things going on in there uh i picked that glaze after a while, when you know your glazes so well and you know your pots so well that you know what color, you know what you're going to do to them the moment you're making them because you have just the right glaze. For instance, this one where it's where the glaze is thick, it's really rich green, but where it's thin on the on those high points, it's uh, like a metallic and it's almost like uh, an ancient bronze. It really has a really uh, uh, bold contrast between where the glaze is thick and where it's thin. So I, you know, I picked that, I made that pot to, to, to enhance that glaze and, and vice versa. I do that handle, that's, I use a big spring and I cut, I like a spring from a ballpoint pen and I stretch it all out and I pull through the clay and zigzag it and it gives me those cool little ridges there. The tool that I used was uh, one that, you know, you, you, every, every, there hasn't been an original pot made in about 3,000 years. So the tool that I use with that is uh, one of my dearest mentors, uh, Warren McKenzie, uh, did pots with that tool. And I uh, saw him, his pots, and saw his, the tool in his hand and fashioned one myself. I, uh, I do make my own tools because they tend to have your own mark. You know, all right. Now, can we, can we move... Uh up and to the left and uh yeah. talk to me about this and i this this wonderful piece this wonderful well place. uh i'll i'll this way I'll, okay, I'll tell you about this plate and then i'll tell you about my theory about plates um i like to uh, when i do brush brush work and gestures on pots i like them to have the quality like they're capturing a moment in time where it's all it's all about energy and the energy the eye have the energy that the piece releases but it, so it's like a, it's it's like a, a snapshot in a in a moment and I'd like to capture that so it's like I, I try to make them look like they're almost moving uh, oh. by, by what I do and this one sort of looks like a wave cresting um, and uh, and there's like there's a order and chaos there's light and dark there's all things these things opposing one another and that brings uh, interpretation for you, at least lots of room for you to interpret. There's something in there that reminds you of something that it's, it's so funny to me when everybody, when I ask somebody what, what they like about it, it's never what I think it's going to be. It's always, they'll, it's uh, some childhood memory, but it's, it's, it's all about your personal experience, how, what you bring to that, that makes you either like it or not like it. And, and uh, that's, it's so funny how people interpret things differently. Um, I have a great big kiln. I have got one of the biggest kilns around, and uh, it, it's a it, it's all built just for my proportions. Uh, it's I don't have to stoop. It, it's the, the highest pour, the pots are right there. The lowest are right by my knees, so I'm not down. I'm not hunched down, and it all rolls in. But it's got a lot of space. It's it's maybe 125 cubic feet of, of space to stack in. So I, it holds a lot. When I really cram that thing full of gills. It, it holds as many as 500 pots. So I have got, I've got a lot, what, what potters don't have in abundance is real estate in their kilns, shelf space. Yeah, that's, the, that's how you determine the price of things is how much space they take up in a, in a kiln. And plates take up a whole, they really hog a shelf. There's not much room. When you put a plate on a shelf, there's not much room for anything else. So consequently, it's, it's difficult for potters to crank out volumes of plates because they just hog up so much of your kiln that there's not room for anything else. I could fire 36 plates every single time. So uh, I decided what I was going to do is really go crazy with the plates because um, what plates do was what I found is that like if somebody needs a, a wedding gift, they'll come and buy one of my vegetable steamers and 
that's that's that and they've come and they bought the wedding but i would i would only see my customers when they needed a, we a, a wedding gift but the plates were something that they would buy four of take them home see how much they enjoyed using them how adorable they were these things really take a joke um they don't break that they're, they're really sturdy as can be but people don't know that until they try them so they take take, take four home see how they work and then the next time i would have an event they would be there again they would have won four more play plates and keeping uh, a supply going and having a whole set really kept my customers coming back over and over again. It just sort of frees them up to add anything they want to, to this really nice eclectic group. And it's been a great business model. It's really um, it turned the corner. It's, it, it's made people come back over year after year. People that I see, I only used to see for the wedding present now come out. I see them once a year. Okay, I, I'm going to take us off from uh, from the uh, three images and get it back okay. to you and me. All right. You know, this is this is the noon hour, and I'm missing the Waltons right now. Uh, uh, my my daily routine. I used to eat my lunch and watch the news, but the news was so aggravating and so yeah. it made me so anxious that I found that the Waltons was on at the same time, and it is so. It, it's so, they're always really kind to each other. They like grandpa is not a, a jerk. Uh, everybody makes nice at the end. So you're my you're you're cutting into my therapy session. I want you to know. Well, uh, well, good luck then. You know, I'm glad to do it. <laughs> All right, uh, David. I, I, you know, there's there are a lot of people obviously over 40 plus years who have who continue to see your work as you were saying but i'm sure there's lots of people out there that would love to see uh more of it so do you have any social media connections or or a uh you know website so that they could see it and, and possibly buy uh some work for, from yours online that's a good idea rich i should do that <laughs> uh, well up, up until March, uh, having a studio in the Torpedo Factory Art Center has given me all the business that I can handle. And and uh, I've never had to do any of those things. No Etsy, no fancy website, none of that. However, it's a new world, as we know. And so uh, I see new things coming. Fortunately, my my beautiful daughter is uh, does websites uh, and you know, award-winning websites. She, she lives in Australia. And... Uh, She's just killing it down there. So um, I have a I have a distinct feeling that I'm, my website is going to look a lot better. Anyway, it's davidnortonpottery.com. Uh, uh, okay. I've got my vegetable steamers on there, and those are really great pieces. They they I've made thousands of people love to use them, love to give them as wedding gifts. That's the only thing that's up there right now. I do have pictures of my other work that just as as little samplers, but they're there are a lot of most of the pictures are really old and and I don't have those things for sale. But I, I see um, I, I, I in the, on the rise that I see my website changing and offering new things. Um, I do I do have my own gallery here at, at my home, um, and that's uh, really what I thought was I would ride into the sunset with, and I still I still am. Um, with social distancing is is not a problem here. When you only have one customer a week, it's it's easy to find a, a space to to roam around in. So, but I've got my own gallery, and uh, it's easy for people to come and pick something out, and and not have to get within ten feet of me or or my, anything. But um, uh, I, I do see uh, David Norton Pottery uh, expanding in the in the near future. So anyway, stay safe. Thank and, you, Rich. Uh, and and have a have a great have a great day. All right, man. I appreciate the interview. Good job. Take care.